old friends and welcome to this cold and wintry Alberta day. Today we're going to talk about something that is a little bit self-serving, so content creators like to avoid it or not talk about it. But based on my experience from four years as a content creator, this is something that you, the audience, are generally interested in, which is how to help the creator and maximize your impact. And let's face it, social media and the internet are complicated. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about some of the things that you can do to maximize your impact on the content creator that you like and how to get something in return. And you can do that in free and paid ways. So let's start with some of the free stuff that you can do. First one is you can subscribe to your content creator's YouTube channel or follow them on Instagram. But to be clear, your subscription or following doesn't mean anything monetary to that content creator. When you subscribe and follow somebody, you're really doing two things. One is you become a number in the followers count for that content creator that then this person can use to apply for grants, apply for concerts, or increase their prestige amongst their colleagues. What does that do? It allows them to have collaborations with content creators that otherwise wouldn't look at them, or collaborations with brands that see that this content creator has an impact on the audience. And the other thing your subscription does to the content creator, which in my opinion is more important, I can describe it in a metaphor. Imagine the content creator is a flower. Your subscription or following is like the little drops of water or sunshine that allows this flower to bloom. If this flower had no drops of water or sunshine, eventually it will wither and die. Of course, I'm talking about mental health. Every day when I wake up as part of my routine is I log into my YouTube and I see how many subscribers I've gained in the last day and that helps me create more content and different style of content. But the real thing it does is it motivates me to work for that entire day and do more. And when I wake up and I have little subscribers count, I have to be honest, it really is demotivating. Unless you have a strong will and a clear business plan, which thankfully I have, there's a really good chance you would give up at some point. So just keep in mind that if you subscribe and follow, it does nothing monetary for that content creator, but it does wonders for their mental health. The second free thing that you can do, which is more beneficial to the content creator, is that you engage with their content. So right now in 2024, in terms of the algorithms, if you like something, that's good. But if you comment on something, that's even better. And Instagram has the ability to answer questions or repost or reshare or whatever. These all work better than if you just comment. But the ultimate form of free help that you can give the content creator, which actually saves them a lot of money, is that you share their content organically on Facebook groups, Instagram or YouTube comments. Because me as a content creator, I see a lot of comments from students asking for a certain thing and I have the answer for that. But I can't just keep replying my paid products or promoting my channel as an answer to those people because then I will come off as a spammer. But if you do it on the content creator's behalf and you tell the person, hey, I actually know this content creator and he answers your question in this course or this video or this post, then that works great for exposing that content creator to new audiences. And the last free thing that you can do for your content creator is to join their email list and join whatever free products or services or courses that they're offering. When you're on their newsletter, make sure you read those emails and reply back if you can. That will enhance their email domain reputation. If you want to unsubscribe or not get those emails anymore, don't hit the unsubscribe button, don't block or don't report a spam. That really hurts their business. What you should do is you should write them an email and ask politely that you get removed from this list. Personally, whenever somebody does that, I remove them right away and they don't hear back from me. So if your content creator keeps sending you emails after that, you can then unsubscribe or block them. But until then, make sure you don't do that because it really hurts their email domain reputation. Now, if you get their free stuff, make sure you engage with it and get to really know your content creator because if you liked it and it impacted your life, maybe this time you progress to the paid services. So. Free stuff in order of impact from least to most. You can like or subscribe, you can comment, or you can share the content creator's posts or paid products on Facebook or Instagram or YouTube. And the last thing, engage with that content creator's email list and free offerings. But if you want to get more out of your content creator, you are going to have to spend some money. So let's talk about how you can help your content creator financially, because let's be honest, subscribes, likes, and shares, and email newsletter comments don't pay the bills. The first thing you can do on your content creator's YouTube channel is that if you like what they're doing, you can give them a super thanks. 
Super thanks is like the like button. It has a heart symbol with a dollar sign in it. It's you saying thank you to that content creator for a particular video in monetary form. It acts like donations. So you can give them a dollar, two dollars, or whatever amount of money that you can afford. Super thanks act the same as subscribe. They greatly enhance the mental health of your content creator because it shows them somebody is willing to give them money and that is a humbling experience for the content creator to know that there are people who are willing to do that for their work. Alternatively, if that content creator isn't eligible for super thanks yet, or if they exist entirely on Instagram or Facebook or non-YouTube channels, you can look inside that platform for ways we can help them that way, or look for ways to give them donations if there's a donate button. But I would say serious content creators don't have donate buttons. Instead, they have a business plan where they are offering you a service in exchange for money. The second thing you can do is go on Patreon and subscribe to that content creator's Patreon channel if they have it. Patreon is a paid monthly subscription where you get something in return from the content creator. The content creator would set different tiers at different prices, in other words, different membership plans, and each tier would give you different benefits. So let's just say you wanna give more or you don't wanna to commit to monthly subscription. You should go to that content creator and figure out what are their paid offerings. For example, in my case, you can buy my PDFs as a one-time purchase rather than subscribing to Patreon for access to the whole library. Those PDFs can go from 97 cents to $10 to $20, depending on what you're getting. And the last and usually most expensive thing that you can do to support that content creator is to enroll in one of their courses. The online education industry is growing. Most content creators now have some form of a course that teaches you something, and those courses save you tons of money if they are done correctly. In my case, my flagship course, Ukulele Fingerstyle Basics, teaches you everything you need to know about fingerstyle from prep grade, which is kind of grade zero, all the way to grade three. So prep grade, grade one, grade two, and grade three are the beginner grades, and you get to learn everything about fingerstyle technique in a five course bundle. These courses are significantly cheaper than private lessons if you do the math, and also you don't have to commit to them time-wise. Before you enroll in a content creator's course though, make sure you double check the following. Is there a return policy? This is important because you wanna check out what they're doing. You might not like their videography, their sound quality, they might be talking too fast, you might actually not learn learn from their style of teaching, you might just not like the whole experience. So a robust return policy is important before you invest in their course. The second thing you want to check is, do you get lifetime access? Online courses are all about lifetime access. If your access expires, I would say it's not worth it. I personally am enrolled in many online courses and they're all lifetime accesses. I've only finished one of them and the other ones, I just have them in my to-do list. I've bought some of them three years ago. I've bought some of them a few months ago. They are still in my to-do list and I know that I have access to them because they offer lifetime access. And the last thing I would say for me that is important is that I don't enroll in courses that are based on annual membership because online courses come pre-packaged. Once you buy them once, the content creator usually doesn't add to it. So it doesn't make sense to subscribe to an annual membership. What you want to do is you want to go after one-time purchase courses. But that's just a personal preference in my opinion. And of course, the last thing you can do with your content creator is get private lessons or coaching, but that is very expensive. Usually after five sessions, you've already paid more than their online courses. So I'll say it again, enroll in their courses first before you get private lessons. And of course, if the content creator offers tickets to concerts or live merchandise, then that will help them as well. So my dear friends, I know this was a little bit self-serving, but at least this gives you an idea of what you can do to maximize your impact on the content creators out there and making sure that their mental health is sane so that they keep creating content that you ultimately benefit from. It's a win-win situation. The content creator gets to afford to support their family while you get to grow in one way or another depending on what you're interested in for that content creator. So my name is Mustafa and this is Ukulele Sessions. We didn't really talk about ukulele, but in the next episode, we will see you there.